subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. These passengers are being made familiar with the emergency procedures on their aircraft. They may have seen it all before, but the chances are there's something new to learn. The exits may be in a different place from any other aircraft they've flown in. Cinemas and theatres too have signs to guide their audiences smoothly to the exits. In the same way, guests staying in hotels have warning notices and escape routes posted in their rooms to guide them to safety in the event of a fire. Being familiar with your surroundings is a vital part of being safe. During your career, you may go on board a variety of different vessels. Or you may be someone other than a crew member, employed or engaged on board. Because no two ships are identical, it's important that you know the correct actions to take in an emergency before assuming your shipboard duties. This is now a mandatory requirement, whether you're a crew member or not. This means that you must know your ship and be familiar with shipboard safety, emergency and safety routines, and important signs and signals. Ships can be dangerous places. Safety familiarization demands your careful attention as your personal safety may depend on it as well as others on board. In some companies you may be given basic safety training before you join your ship. And once you join the ship you may be handed a safety checklist to follow. The master may delegate someone to familiarize you with company safety regulations, alarm signals and your own personal safety routine in a language you can understand. On some ships you may be given additional safety information. You should then use the safety checklist to familiarize yourself with each item. Somebody may be assigned to accompany you. In particular, make sure you know where your muster station is, where your life jacket is located and how to don it correctly and which is your lifeboat remembering that you may have to find your way there in the dark you will come to deck 8 which is the embarkation deck and the lifeboat will be lowered from deck 9 to deck 8 before you embark and you will embark it when it's bowsed in on deck 8 you may also have special duties in an emergency such as closing doors switching off equipment or warning others Close it, just press the button mark to close. They allow ringing a couple of Familiarize yourself with your personal emergency routine until you're absolutely certain you know what to do. Take your time and don't leave anything out. If you're not sure, ask. Yes, it just round to the left and then straight on. Okay, thank you. On joining your ship, you're expected to understand common safety signs and symbols. You'll see them wherever you go, above and below decks, from no smoking signs to muster stations. Many important symbols are shown in the booklet that accompanies this video. You should also know the position of emergency exits and recognize and understand the different alarm signals you may hear. Muster lists are displayed in various locations around the ship, including the accommodation, bridge and engine room. They give details of the ship's alarm signals, where you should muster in an emergency, your lifeboat and any special duties you may have. This information may also be posted in your cabin or it may be shown on a card given to you to keep. Read the details carefully when you join and learn them. Remember your emergency muster station and your lifeboat muster station may be different. So make certain you know where to go when you hear the relevant alarm signals. The most important signal is the general emergency alarm. 
If you hear seven or more short blasts, followed by one long blast on the ship's whistle or siren, you should go to your muster station immediately. The ship's alarm bells or klaxons will also be sounded in the event of a general emergency and may be followed by an announcement on the public address system. On some ships, the general emergency alarm system is used to give other signals depending on where you should muster. For instance, at a specified muster area or near your lifeboat. There may also be a fire alarm system aboard your ship which operates independently from the general emergency alarm. Find out what emergency signals are given aboard your ship, what each one means, and where you should muster each time. Learn them. Then learn them again. In a real emergency, you may not have time to think. If you find a fire or see smoke, you should raise the alarm. Then inform the bridge. Stay calm. Keep what you say simple, giving just the basic information. Brace second mate. Fire in decade galley. Okay, close the fire doors, evacuate. Right. Unless the fire is small and localised, never tackle the blaze on your own. If in doubt, isolate the fire by closing all nearby doors and leave it to the trained firefighting teams on board. Throughout the ship, there are portable fire extinguishers you should know their type and location. Portable extinguishers are designed to fight different types of fire. They may contain water, foam, dry powder, carbon dioxide or other agents depending on their intended use. They may be color coded for instant recognition. Practical demonstrations may be given during emergency drills. Look out for the various types and colors of extinguishers aboard your ship and familiarize yourself with the instructions on the label. If you're unsure, ask. Fire at sea is one of the greatest hazards facing any ship. Everyone on board must be constantly alert for fire and know how to respond. During drills and emergencies, you will have to don your life jacket. Often your life jacket will be in your cabin. Sometimes it may be issued to you when you join. Life jackets come in many different designs. Find out where your life jacket is located and practice putting it on. There may also be additional life jackets on board. These are often stored in large labelled boxes or lockers near the lifeboats. Look out for posters in the accommodation showing the correct way to don your own type of life jacket. The possibility of having to take to the lifeboats and abandon ship is remote, but you must still know what to do. Emergency drills will be practiced regularly. As soon as you hear the general alarm, or if seven or more short blasts and one long blast are sounded on the ship's whistle, you must report quickly and calmly to your muster station for further instructions. Take your life jacket with you. As you leave your cabin or workstation, try to bring some warm clothing with you but don't take risks. If there's heavy smoke in the accommodation, you should follow the direction signs on the bulkheads leading to the emergency exits. Keep low beneath the smoke. Crawl if necessary, as clearer air lies close to the deck. On arrival at your muster station, there'll be a roll call. Members of the crew assigned to emergency duties, such as firefighting, will be given instructions on what to do next. Meanwhile, the lifeboats will be swung out by designated crew members and made ready. There is a set procedure for taking to the lifeboats. This will be explained to you during lifeboat drills. Your ship is also equipped with life rafts as an additional safeguard. Do not board your lifeboat or activate life rafts unless ordered to do so. In the unlikely event of having to abandon ship, this order will usually be given verbally by the master. Abandon ship! If you see somebody fall overboard, 
shout man overboard and throw the nearest lifebuoy over the side. Man overboard! Man overboard! Raise the alarm, but above all, make sure the bridge is informed immediately. The officer there can release a smoke float which will give the ship a marker to steer towards. You can help by keeping your eyes on the person in the water and keep looking until told otherwise. While the ship is manoeuvring, the crew will be called to their muster stations. The master or officer of the watch will take charge. This, like every emergency, calls for quick, decisive action. You must know what to do if you're first on the scene of an accident or other medical emergency. Unless absolutely essential, don't move the casualty. First, raise the alarm. Next, inform the officer of the watch about the emergency. If you can't do this yourself because you're attending the casualty, ask another crew member to do it for you. To reduce the risk of an injury, always wear protective clothing when working. The most common type of accident aboard ship is a slip or a fall. Therefore, take particular care if decks are wet or slippery. Beware of moving machinery. Safety boots should be worn while working, and hard hats when on deck or in the engine room. Keep the casualty calm, warm and protected until help arrives. The master and some ship's officers are qualified first aiders and can provide assistance for most injuries. They can also contact medical experts ashore. As a precaution against flooding, ships are constructed with watertight bulkheads. Any opening in a watertight bulkhead is fitted with a watertight door. Sliding type doors are the most common. Closing the door triggers an alarm. If power driven, there'll also be a hand operated mechanism on each side in case of power failure. Watertight doors should remain closed at sea and should not be opened without permission from a senior officer. Weathertight doors have a different purpose and are designed to keep out wind, sea and spray. Many external doors are of this type. They often have a high sill and have clamping devices known as dogs to provide a tight seal. Fire doors are barriers against the spread of fire. They are often fitted with a heavy closing spring and should never be hooked back. Other types of fire doors may close automatically if the fire alarm is sounded. As a rule, if a door is closed, keep it closed. If you see a no entry sign, don't, don't go in without permission. And never enter an enclosed space without authorization. If in doubt, ask. This video covers the mandatory safety familiarization training requirements in general terms only. Although it's given you a broad view of shipboard safety and how to react in an emergency, it's essential that you familiarize yourself completely with the alarms, equipment and routines aboard your own ship as they may differ from what you've seen. Your personal safety and the safety of others may depend on your familiarity with safety procedures. It's up to you to develop a good working knowledge of safety practices from the moment you arrive. Undergoing safety familiarization is a vital part of this process. And that applies to everybody employed or engaged on your ship, even the film crew. And cut.